This is eDevice, week 1, tutorial 1, on question 4. So in this question here, we are supposed to determine the values of the voltage VD1, VR1, the current I1, uh, VD2, VR2, as well as I2 for the circuit shown below in figure Q4. In this circuit here, there is only one voltage source Vs in the center. So the current from the positive terminal of this voltage source will actually come out like this and be split up into two branches. So the two branches will give a current of I1 as well as I2. The current I1 that travels towards this diode D1 here will be blocked by the diode D1. Hence, the diode D1 will be reverse bias. Whereas for the current I2 that actually goes to this D2 here, it enters from the positive terminal of D2 first. Hence, diode D2 will be forward bias. Now since we know that the status of uh, D1 and D2 are reverse as well as forward bias respectively, so we have to actually redraw the circuit first to its equivalent circuit in order for, to find the six parameters that we are supposed to calculate. So what I'm drawing here now is actually the equivalent circuit order. So D2 is actually forward bias, hence it's replaced by a voltage source of 0 0.7 volts. And then when it comes to the diode D1, because it's reverse bias, therefore it's actually being replaced by an open switch. Okay, so this is what happens to D1 here, it's an open switch. And this is the current I1. Okay, to answer the uh, six parameters that we are supposed to calculate, looking at the uh, equivalent circuit uh, below here, right? So the uh, current for I1, will therefore be equals to 0 amps. Reason is because uh, the circuit on the left hand side here, right, this circuit here on the left hand side, okay, uh, is actually a broken circuit. Okay, so therefore, there's, there will be no current I1 flowing through that part of the circuit. Hence, the current I1 is equals to 0 amps. Okay, now since I1 is equals to 0 amps, right, so therefore, we can calculate what is the voltage across the resistor R1 or you call it as VR1 here. I, VR1 will be equal to uh, the current I1 times the resistance of R1. Uh, this is where you will see the voltage across resistor R1. Okay. Now since I1 is equal to 0 amps, so therefore anything which is multiplied by 0 will be equal to 0 as well. So therefore VR1 will have a voltage of 0 volts. And then to find out what is the voltage across the diode D1, which is VD1, so it's here, VD1. Now, even though it's open circuit, right, uh, don't be mistaken that the voltage across the diode D1 will be equals to zero volts, just because it's open circuit, it's not actually, okay? So if you do a K KVL around uh, this circuit here, right, you do a KVL, okay, what you will have is actually this, Vs, will still be equals to VR1 plus VD1. Okay, because earlier we have calculated that the uh, voltage across the resistor R1 is actually equals to zero volts, right? So therefore, the voltage of VD1 will be equals to Vs, which is 10 volts. Now, we will actually calculate uh, the uh, three remaining parameters on the right hand side here, which is VD2, VR2, as well as ID2. Okay, so for VD2, this is VD2 here. We already know that uh, since the diode D2 is actually forward bias, so therefore uh, it's replaced by a battery of 0 0.7 volts. Hence, VD2 is 0 0.7 volts.
going on to find out what is the voltage of VR2. If you again do a KVL in this uh, circuit on the right hand side loop here, okay, so you will actually get this KVL uh, equation. Vs will be equal to VR2 plus VD2. Okay, so Vs is 10 volts. Okay, VR2 is what we want to find out. And uh, VD2 is actually the forward voltage of the diode, which is 0.7 volts. Okay, so with this, we are able to find out what is VR2. It's just simply 10 volts minus 0.7 volts, which will give us 9.3 volts. And then uh, lastly, we need to find out what is the current I2. So if you want to find the current I2, we simply make use of Ohm's law, which simply takes VR2 divided by the resistance of R2. So this will be 9.3 volts over 1.8K. So the answer for I2 will be equals to around 5.17 milliamps. So that's for question 4. Going on now to question 5, which is a level 2 question. So uh, by referring to the circuit diagram in question uh, figure Q5 here, we are supposed to determine whether each of the diodes is forward or reverse bias. There are three diodes here, from diode D1 to diode D3. And then we are supposed to determine the value of the current IT, which is the total current that comes out from the uh, voltage source. Now, assuming the forward voltage for all diodes is 0 0.7 volts here, right? so we will now try to analyze whether each diode here is forward or reverse bias. So you have the current IT, right, that actually comes up from the positive terminal of this 30.7 uh, volts voltage source here, right? So this current will actually pass through the 10K resistor, right? So then the current will actually be split up into two paths like this, okay? Now, this current here, right, that goes down towards the diode D1 will be en trying to enter from the uh, cathode side of this diode here. Okay, so therefore, we can straight away analyze that diode D1 will be reverse bias. Okay, so this current here uh, that is approaching uh, the 20 kilo ohm resistor will then continue its path to this point here. Okay, and then again, uh, there will be splitting of current at this point here. Okay, so you have to split up into two paths. Okay, so the current that actually goes down here towards diode D2, right, is trying to enter from the anode side of diode D2. So therefore, the diode D2 will be forward bias. Lastly, this current here, right, uh, again you see that this current is trying to enter from the cathode side of diode D3. So it's actually blocked by the diode D3. And therefore, diode D3 is actually reverse bias. Okay, so the three status for the diodes are as such. D1 is actually reverse bias. D2 is forward bias. And D3 is reverse bias. Okay, so since we know the status of the three diodes here, so uh, to find the current IT, we need to redraw uh, this uh, figure Q5 here. Okay, so if we redraw right uh, by changing the diodes into their equivalent uh, models, right, this is what will happen here. Okay, diode D3 is actually reverse bias, so it's actually replaced by an open switch. This is the DK here. This used to be diode D3, right? And over this point here, right, uh, diode D2 is forward bias, so it's replaced by an uh, by a battery, okay, of value 0 0.7 volts. And then the diode D1, which is also reverse bias, is replaced by an open switch. This is D1. This is D2.
okay so the current that we need to find is actually this current it here now if you look at this uh, circuit that i've just drawn here right you can actually further reduce this circuit into a more simplified circuit okay now just think of it this way here there will be no current passing through here right so we can actually remove this open switch of uh, diode d1 here okay now there will also not be not have any current coming through here as well because the diode d3 is actually being replaced by an open switch as well okay so that means our uh, so-called simplified circuit will be reduced to this now this is the current IT that we need to find this is the 10k resistor this is 20k resistor and uh, this is diode D2 okay which has a voltage of 0 0.7 volts okay so what we have left here right is actually a series circuit tree right comprising of just four uh, components left here the 30.7 volts voltage source the 0 0.7 volts uh, battery and then the two resistors 10k and 20k okay so we can actually do a kbl around this closed loop here okay so by kbl around this closed loop right you will get 30.7 volts which is equals to a it times 10k plus it times 20k and plus 0.7 volts okay so if you actually uh adjust this uh, formula here right equation here so what you have essentially it will be equals to 30.7 volts minus 0.7 volts divided by 10k plus 20k okay so then what you have what you have is actually 30 volts divided by 30 kilo ohms okay so this will result in a final value of it of 1 milliamps and that's the end for this question